Hey, welcome to the Barcast the Podcast. We are back with you, another exciting edition. Myself, Salt, along St. George. If I'm looking a little smoother than normal, it's because I just came off of a real video shoot, so I got some makeup then, right? So, <laughs> for once, I'm looking better at George on the podcast. Yeah, I, I, I need to shave. I'm wearing a cap because I ain't got my hair. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, just razzy today. So, bar season is I want to say almost in full swing. We've got the training sessions going on. Uh-huh. And we've got the um, trail mix coming up in September, September 25th. Absolutely, yeah. We, we want to spend some time today talking about trail mix. So stay with us because we've had to make a few changes right. to the actual way we were going to structure the event to allow for COVID and a few other things. So, yeah, we're going to talk all about that today. Well, actually, I feel like we could start there, though, to, to be honest, George. But I feel like the majority of people tuning in right now want to know about what's happening on September 25th. Yeah, and I hope I hope we get this podcast out quickly because one of the major changes <laughs> uh, is that we've had to cap the number of participants in each wave. In okay. Each so, um, you know, as far, as far as sporting events are concerned now, the COVID monitoring unit has been gracious enough to allow us to have this event. Good. Um, but the criteria is that we don't have more than 100 persons per race. Per race. So the way we're going to do it is that we're going to start with a youth cross-country challenge in the morning. Yeah. Uh, just to briefly go over that again, remember it's teams of five. Mm-hmm. Um, each team must have one female on there. The females score against other females in that heat, not against the men. Okay. Okay, so if I'm the second female, but I'm 22nd in the race, I still get two points. Two points, right. right? And so it's cross-country country scoring. So it's uh, cross-country scoring, so we add all your places together, mm-hmm. and the lowest cumulative score will be adjudged a winner. Right. right? Um, so the first thing is that we should know is that we've changed the route. Okay. Yeah. So if you've been training the route at Bath, um, and you're you know every every nook and cranny <laughs> and every pothole, you gotta go now to Peg. Okay. And, and learn Peg. Um, again, as far as being able to maintain the social distance. This is as a result of the CM COVID. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because you know Fortress Farms is nice. It's very cozy. Yeah. Um, but if we get 200, 150 people, it's not easy to spread them out. Right. Whereas Peg is 125 acres. I could tell you go across there by that fifth acre. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. stand up over there and we can still maintain a physical distance. So yeah, your bubble, it could be your bubbles before you came in and absolutely. everything. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's one major change. And that, that does a couple things for us. It makes it easier to manage traffic. Right. Uh, it adds more trail to the trail mix because that was one of the comments we were getting coming back that people wanted more trail. It was too much road for them up yeah. by Bath. Uh, and it allows us to really spread participants out and not have too much jumbling um, between people who might not be from the same school or club or organization. So yeah, yeah. I think PEG gives us a lot of advantages. And obviously, if you're going to be doing bar in November, PEG is a place... As the home of, that of is bar. Home. Exactly. Sure, know, you want yeah. to be able to figure out the course and know exactly where things are. So this is a good introduction, I think. So if you having 20... I was only going to be 20 teams then because it's five, five people per team for the youth cross country. Correct. Well, 20 teams per division. Per division, and right. That's maximum. So we don't, we don't know that we're going to get this. It's the first time we're doing it. We right. have, we've had strong We're going to get them. Yeah, yeah we've <laughs> had strong interest from a couple of distance groups, including Leo Grimes. Big shout out to Leo and, and um, uh, Coach, Coach Bayer and a few other coaches out there have already expressed their interest. Yeah. Um, so let's say, for example, we had 20 teams between the under 16 and the under 18. We might just merge those two divisions. Right, right, right. Still so get the 100 exactly. people on it. Right. right. Yeah. So the idea is to start with the under 20s at 6 a.m. Yeah. Um, they, they'll be finished within 45 minutes or so. It's still a 5K, right? It's still a 5K. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it's uh, definitely those under 16s. They're looking at uh, under, under 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. You know, but you know, maybe somebody's come along just, just because they want to do a cross-country event, but they're not really a cross-country athlete. Yeah. As sometimes you see with basketball players or football players or whatever. Um, so we'll start with the under 20s at 6 a.m., mm-hmm. um, the under 18s at 7.30 a.m., mm-hmm. and then the under 16s at 9 a.m. And so yeah. that puts an hour and a half between each wave. So there shouldn't really be any mixing between the divisions. We're going to do the presentation right after each wave. Uh, and if persons... Kind of like Olympics. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have our big Olympic ceremony come out. Now, and if, if we have... Um, if persons want to stay around and support, you know, friends, families, or, or schoolmates, then you can stay around wearing your mask yeah. uh, and obviously maintain the distance. So and it, it's a big... It's, as you said, it's a big round. But the good thing about PEG is that you can possibly... Get a location where you vantage point. You can see lots of action as well, no? Exactly. Just like just like the obstacle course race. So yeah. you can be kind of in the area by the restaurant where you can see start, finish. Yeah. Or you can be over by the silos where you can see them coming through and so on. There's a lot yeah. of areas where you can go and get a good vantage point. 
you have um, disclosed what you think the route is going to be as yet for the trail mix? I think by the time this podcast comes out, we would have the route up on Round Go. Okay. Um, today is Friday that we're recording, and t- Friday evening is when I'm going out to actually walk the course. Uh-huh. I have a pretty good idea of, of, of what I want it to be. Obviously, we want to make sure we include a little bit of elevation. Definitely. So, so in my mind, we want to get Bowling Alley. The challenge with getting Bowling Alley, Alley is that it's going to be an out and back, right? So, right. you know, with, with persons descending quickly, you have to make sure that people aren't bumping into each other. But I have a kind of solution in mind for that already. So I'm going to test it this evening. Okay. Um, and I think we should be able to... We did a training run yesterday, as you know, because you were there, which was just over 5K. Mm-hmm. Um, so if we trim off a couple bits of that, we should be able to get something that is about exactly 5K, including Bowling Alley and a few other little challenges as well. Yeah, when, when you say it's challenges, it doesn't mean that you have to carry a sandbag or a log or a bucket or anything like that. You're going to get to that, though. Yeah. Um, sponsors for the trail mix. So the sponsors for the trail mix is... is the the main sponsor is obviously the Amaroni Charitable Trust. They got Amaroni uh, Trust. Amaroni tonight. Charitable Trust has come out and they've made this event possible. Um, remember, if you're wondering why you should do this, each division, under 20, under 16, under 18, the winning team in each division gets $1,500 towards supplies for their school, club, or organization. And the coach from the winning team gets a $500 reward. So if, right. you're, if you're lucky enough to coach the winning under 20, under 18, and under 16 team, you go home with $1,500. Um, I hope the coach is listening. That's not yeah. bad. It's not bad day's work. <laughs> yeah. We know a lot of time these, these coaches give their time pretty much freely. You know, you may get paid by your school as a physical education teacher, but then you're at the stadium, you're at wherever, botanical gardens, you're at the beach, you're doing additional work with the kids, uh, and you're not really getting paid for it. So I think this really helps to give those coaches a little extra something and show some appreciation to them. The thing about the coaches and the way, if I know these coaches well enough, that money is going to go straight back, back into, into those children world. as well. Exactly. So, and, and that's one of the things we, we didn't really necessarily want to give a cash award to the winning team. Uh, I used to be a part of a track club in, in England, and, and one of the things that happened was that, you know, the very best athletes at the top got what we call subventions. So the, right. in, in the Great Britain team would give them some money for training, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of time, the younger athletes, the younger developmental athletes, didn't really get to see any of that money. But then trickle though, down. Exactly. Even though the club was really facilitating what the better athletes in Greater Commons was doing. So rather than give any money to those five guys who win, we're going to write a check for $1,500 to the club, school, or organization for them to get whatever they need. If they want track shoes for the club, if they want equipment, if they want hurdles, whatever. Well, start and blocks. Start I think that also exactly. goes a long way because some of these youngsters will still be looking to probably go over to U.S. colleges, so you want to maintain your eligibility, right? Absolutely. And then it might just be that this $1,500 goes towards kit for the next inter-school sport. So yeah. Whatever, you know, and goes then, a long way. Exactly. So we, we're hoping that this is enough of an incentive. Obviously, the Amarone Charitable Trust, their mandate is to help to improve the lot of, of young people through sport uh, and physical activity. So this is right up their, their alley. Um, so come out and take advantage of it. It's, they've been very generous and kind uh, in stepping up to sponsor this event, and we appreciate that from them for sure. So you're looking to kick off in the morning time at 6 o'clock, and you're going all the way on down to 9. You said last wave runs off at 9. The last wave, the under 16 will go off at 9. Yeah, and yeah. then we have a little break, mm-hmm. and then we come back. Just like bar. Yeah, just like bar, but this break might be a little longer than bar. We come back in the afternoon mm-hmm. at three thirty p.m. and uh, we're going to run the women's division of the five k. Adults so, time, no. Adults, yeah. So we yeah. Have, we have a couple. I already have a couple of registrations there that I don't want to speak on yet. Yeah, we don't want to scare anyone. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm I'm saying that I expect the women's and the men's. The men will go at five p.m. Women yeah. at three thirty, men at five, and we expect women and men's division to be extremely competitive it's and be I'm, I'm, looking contest, for, yeah. I'm looking forward for it already now prizes will go for the first um three yeah. and then we have once we take out those three then we have age group prizes from under 20 all the way up to over 55 so talking my language yeah, now yeah. You, might, you might still be able to win a prize <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah maybe um Speaking of the women and men the adult categories I know one of the bigger draws uh, for the trail mix was that people can actually come and walk or hike. Yes. I'm going to urge them now, uh-huh. from the time you hear this, go register because we have competitive people coming out. We're not saying that the um, people who are not competitive can't come out. So we need you all to come and register. You could probably walk. Mm-hmm. Peg, that's where George has given us an hour and a half exactly. in between the waves, right? So we, it's just a matter of the first 100 people is exactly. going to run in. And when you go to the website now to register for it, there's no, there's no fee, right? right. You're not going to see a fee. So you register to reserve your place. 
So the first 100 people, obviously, will take a few in case some people drop out. You register to block your space to guarantee that you can take part in the event. Yeah. The Friday preceding the event, which will be Friday 25th of September, we're going to do p packet pickup. Right. So you'll come and you collect your race number. Uh, you'll collect your bibs. Uh, we have T-shirts, but those are going to be finisher T-shirts. So if you're wondering, what part of my $30 is going? What all they do is run about in the country. Well, we have finisher T-shirts yeah, for right, right, right. as well. Um, again, thanks to Amaroni Charitable Trust. Um, but once you come to pick up your race bib uh, and whatever other little you know, goodies we have from you from our sponsors, yeah. you need to make sure that you either present a vaccine certificate or you present a negative PCR test. You're oh, not okay. going to get your race number without one of those two things. Okay. Okay, so you come along. Um, that will be the Friday, so it would have to be within 48 hours of that Friday, so it's within 72 hours of the race. Yeah. You show your negative test. You show your, your vaccine certificate. We put you in the race. We give you your race bib. We take your 30 bucks from you, uh, and we see you the next day for the actual Ready race. I, I think it's good that um, you, you get any shirts as a finisher shirt because nothing really – it drives me crazy. I get a brand new shirt. I'm having to wash it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I get out there. And then we're out on a, a Barcast podcast. Correct. Get as well. Um, let people know early o'clock. Get tested uh, or get vaccinated. And that way, you know, for sure we're going to have the event. Because we want to be able to have the event. Correct. And I, and I know one of, the, um, one of the athletes reached out to me. And he indicated that we might need to get a letter from, from um, the COVID monitoring unit so that individuals can get tested at the gymnasium but i don't think there's an issue with people walking into the gymnasium no. right now to get tested so no. um it might just be to, f to speed up the whole process to make sure you get back your results exactly. in time exactly and that nobody's you know you don't necessarily have to go to a paid testing center you can just go to the gymnasium obviously if that's more convenient to you to go and pay for it then fine but we're going to make sure that we do everything to make the process as, as smooth and seamless for you as possible you just to mention the goodie bags are going to have in some items from our sponsors. Any other sponsors on board for the 5K Trail Mix? Yeah, for the 5K Trail Mix, we've just added a new hydration sponsor. Mm -hmm. um, when I say hydration, I don't just mean water because obviously we've had Eco Water on board since, Eco, yeah. Since, yeah, since last year. And again, this they they have they're right in line with the philosophy for Barbados Adventure Race because yeah. you know this came this race came out of of me hiking St John and seeing plastic bottles when they grow on plastic bags and wanting to do something to help raise money to clean up the trails. Yeah. Uh, and Eco Falls right in line with that because, you know, they take their water out of the air. Out of the atmosphere. And then and they, the, the bottles are biodegradable <laughs> yeah. uh, and so on and so forth. So that is directly in line with our philosophy. And then we remember last year that all we had at bar yeah. And it was a really hot day. It was a cramp fest. It was a, cra it was a cramp <laughs> fest. There was, I think, I don't know if there's anybody who did that event that didn't cramp. Yeah, uh, at and, some point in time, every team at least had one individual that had a little cramp. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was crazy because it, it was just very, very hot. Uh, and obviously, athletes are pushing themselves to the limit. Yeah. Um, so some sort of refueling, some sort of electrolyte, some sort of hydration, that has more than just water, especially when you get past that 45 minute limit. You know, yeah. usually up to about 45 minutes, close to two hours, you're okay. But from the time you get 90 minutes plus, you definitely need to start replenishing glycogen stores and replenishing your electrolytes. And so yeah. we've got a, a sponsor on board. So this year, everybody should be fine. And it's BioSteel, new to the market. Um, if you heard about the pink drink that a lot of athletes used to use, this is it. Now they've really expanded their range. Uh, we can, you can and it says not it. sugar, not just sugar then. No, so yeah, they have um, no no sugar but long chain, slow release carbohydrates. Yeah, it's some real, real, real technical stuff yeah, there, yeah, no yeah. way. It good for you, basically. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, so we um we have that at, at Surfside, and I think Massey Stories will be carrying by a steel as well. Yeah. And this will be coming in your in your well compact for um, for the five k trail mix and obviously for bar. Now this one you see here is is a ready to drink. But they also have some sachets, so we can give you those. You can mix those in your water bottles. You can carry those with you yeah. in, a convenient, in a convenient package. This is something that you'll be taking before, during, or after the 5K. What do you, what do you recommend? Um, for, uh, 5K is, is really not long enough for anyone who is you know, a half-decent athlete to really... You probably don't even need to drink, honestly. Right. The, the elite guys aren't even going to stop to drink. No, no. For, no. The, for, <laughs> for the average participant now, um, we will have two water stations along the route, so... If you need it, take it. But I, I recommend, obviously, pre-hydrating. Yeah. Uh, and after the event, once you do your cool down, you go and rehydrate as well. And get, and in. get it back in. Right, right. Okay, so that um, 
we pretty much covered almost everything when it comes to Ethereum. I mean, it's going to bring some other stuff later on in the podcast, but Sunday, you had a soul in the yes. middle of the morning. Right, right, right. Um, and you have to tell people it's only a certain type of person you would see on the road at 2 o'clock in the morning, heading to Bath St. Right. John, <laughs> say that they're going to lift up a telephone pole, a bucket, and a sand bike and carry it from Bath to St. John to Browns Beach, yep. coast to coast. George, when you first announced this challenge, I tell, I tell myself, George is a madman. Nobody, right. Nobody's going to do that. Right. And... And 60 nobodies did it. It's <laughs> 60 <six>, zero, right? <laughs> yeah. I understand what I'm telling you. And um, the whole idea seems so crazy. And oh, there I want to start from the beginning. How did you even come up with that challenge, George? Well, people don't believe this, right? But between like the light bulb going off in my head mm. and me posting on social media, like that was 10 minutes. Really? Literally. I had. I had so a, when you came on, you were saying, I, I got this crazy idea. You had literally just had that crazy Literally. <laughs> I, was, I was out on the floor. I had like a, a half hour break between clients. Yeah. And I was like, we had benchmark level one for June. Yeah. We had benchmark level two for July. We got the trail mix in September. We got the pop ups in October. But August, there was a gap in August. Yeah. And at first I was leaving that gap because I know outdoor fitness was looking to do the slingshot or the two and a half K relay, right? Yeah. And and then I spoke to Tompy. He said he wasn't doing it anymore. And I was like, we need to fill August. Yeah. What can we do yeah. for August? And I was like, yeah, we need to give them something that's going to challenge them, that's going to keep them engaged and make some noise around the bar as well. So <laughs> I definitely made some noise with that one. Absolutely. I went straight into to one of the studios at the club, opened up my phone, put it out there. All I heard was how crazy I was. George. <laughs> Immediately, I, right? I thought that I wasn't the only person there. Yeah. <laughs> and then after hearing how crazy I was, I was like, all right, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Um, when I first saw it, I, I thought to myself, there's no way, it's, it's impossible. Um, I even saw some person ask me on Twitter after we, I spoke about it. Asked, what, what is sandbag, the bucket, and the log for? Because right. as far as most people are concerned, just right. walking from Bath uh -huh. to Browns Beach is right. challenging enough. Right. Or I said to them, really, true, that's too easy for barbarians. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, had, I mean, I, I, every now and then I do a hike month where I hike every day for the month. Yeah. And I would usually finish those months with a five day fast and a hike to work. Yeah. Right? And you know I'm fit, but I'm not like an elite endurance athlete. Mm -hmm. I'm not as fit as most of the people who actually do bar. Right. So I figure, well, if you say I, that again, please. I'm not as fit <laughs> as most of the people who do bar. Right. I, I just got our I record, have, guys. I just have good genetics. <laughs> right. So I look a lot fitter than I actually <laughs> am. But I, I, I figure, well, if I can do this, then guys who are training a, a little bit or a lot can definitely do it. And people came out to me and they were like, George, that thing too hard. Yeah. People let me finish. I'm like, listen. I believe in the power of the human spirit, right? And I think some of these challenges tend to be more mental than physical. Yes, you're yeah. going to feel it in your body, but it's mostly about your toughness and your ability to just dig deep and find your way to, to gut it out and get through it. And everybody showed that kind of steel. On it's Sunday. amazing that, amazing not only how many people started, uh -huh. but how many people finished as well. But everybody finished. I mean, yeah. there, were, there were a couple yeah. teams that technically didn't finish with all the implements. Yeah. Um, one, one had... One team had a little minor injury where the log fell on one of the participants' foot, and he had to pull out. He's good now, by the way. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. oh damn. <laughs> <laughs> and just kidding, Fabian. <laughs> and he might, he might be on an elite team for bar. That's all we're saying right now. And, um, and then there was the, the team that didn't actually take the log the entire way. I, I feel a little sorry for them because the yeah. logs are cut from telephone poles, right, from utility yeah. poles, which means they're wider at the bottom than they are at the top. And I think it was just their misfortune that when they got to the logs, they picked up the absolute heaviest logs oh, of whoa. the logs there. So even getting it as far as they did, yeah. you know, was a great achievement. So I don't. So they just gave it directions on where to go back for the log. Where they left no, it. no, they actually put it in the back of the truck and they brought it down. Oh, okay. Very, very graciously. So I just don't Thank want them to feel like you know mm -hmm. they they failed at all. They should still feel pretty good about their achievement because even getting it that far was was major. The level of strategy that was implemented in that. Like, I saw men walking with sponge and come alongs. Yeah, uh, yeah, people yeah. had sponge on the logs. I, 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 I was upset with myself for not even thinking of that because right. such, it's the such bar mo mode, right? That I think right. to myself, you can't put a sponge on it. But when you want to say, you got to get the log, the bucket, and the sandbag to bath. You know? And it wasn't a prize, so. It, uh, right. And then, you know, honestly, this was kind of a, a fairly experimental event for me. Yeah. I wanted to see people go out there. Really, I wanted it also to 
to create some noise on the street. It so did I, definitely do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think like you know, once we turn it into a race, because it's obviously people want it back, then we'll start to put some of those criteria in place about what you can do and what you can do as far as what you can't do as far as protective clothing is concerned. But you know, in the spirit of of, of barbarianism, I think yeah. I think the the small mattress underneath the log was going a little bit far. <laughs> Hi, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> small mattress. It was like a it was like a, a baby mattress. <laughs> you might take it out the crib one time and just wrap it over your shoulder. But apart from that, I think you know the one thing we really didn't want was for people to get injured or hurt. Right. So exactly. if people did what they had to do to get through this one, now we know it's achievable. It's challenging. So now we'll put some things in place and we'll decide exactly where in the bar calendar it goes or maybe we can turn it into, you know, not, I, still, I still don't want it to be a really like a race race because that right. would deter I think well, that, that I, what actually worked well to me was the fact that people started at different times as well. Though. Right. You know what though? I, I feel like as far as making noise is concerned, I would like to go for kind of a three o'clock start for everybody next time. Right. The reason I so say that, people that is... So people will see there's a trail of people passing. Exactly. It's one thing it does, it means that you know, if you're finishing in four, five, six, five and a half hours, you don't spend too much time in the sun. Right. But we're still getting towards the more densely populated areas when people are coming out their houses. Yeah. So we, we still get the visibility. We still get the noise and the excitement from... People were saying, wait, what party are we now log from? Yo. People I mean, would say, bath. Wait, wait, which bath? <laughs> in the bath John? by you. <laughs> <laughs> people couldn't believe it. But I, I tell you, like, I've, I've seen, I've done so many of these events now. And I've been to so many of these events where... You see, ordinary people do extraordinary things. Yeah. And, and really all it takes is, is for them to put their mind to it, get some support from their friends and families, and, and you, you can never I, n- underestimate it. Cannot underestimate the importance of those support drivers. It's absolutely true. They, the friends and family that broke their night sleep yep. to come and join us on the road, that y'all were incredible. But what you said there's no two made sense because it's because they, they were, we were spread out so people were passing it every 45 minutes to yeah. or one and a half but when we passed down opposite that gas station at the bottom of my Lord's Hill a man was literally looking out through the window he was waiting for the next day right, like, right, right. I want to get in this how you guys get in this right, we're right. to go alright so people absolutely impressed first of all but I also want to be a part of the challenge and I think that the next one is going to be fairly heavily subscribed and not even by common people, but by people who normally do bar, who are afraid of the challenge. I'm right. calling. I'm saying it directly. They were afraid of the yeah, challenge, yeah, but yeah. now they woke up this Sunday morning and saw the everybody social media it. posts and they saw the people get through it. And everybody, like, Shh, yep. you could have gone and do the thing though, because it's, it's all I've talked about for the entire week. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I think. I mean, I even had some fairly. Why we consider to be elite athletes? Mm-hmm. I mean, George, that thing too hard. The failure rate is going to be too high. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to take out this. You need to take out that. I'm like, no, man. You need to. You need to trust people. You need to believe in people's ability to persevere and to get yeah. through. And everybody came out there. The grit, the determination. It was just and the camaraderie as well. The camaraderie yeah. amongst people. Everybody supporting each other. It was. It was amazing to watch. I think. Like sometimes you, you see these things and you're sitting down at home or you're watching somebody do something and it, it looks hard and then you get up and you try it yourself. I know I say that course, the course was easy. <laughs> but, no, it wasn't. But you know, but like once you do it, once you attempt it, you're like, well, this was doable. Yeah. And you, you can't just, you know, stay on the you're other side. You've got to push your limits. And I think what happened as well is a lot of people, thankfully, it wasn't that we wake up one day and decided to do it. So they were able to strategize and they were able to say, you know what, this is the fuel we are going to need on right. the trip. This is where we're going to be stopping. Mm-hmm. Remember, guys, it's not a race. But right. one of the things that did inspire my team, at least, and I think it inspired a lot of teams, was that they had people at like Damien and other people driving back and forth on the right. road. I come and give you a right. on where right. this team right. is. Right. It's t- you are you at the top of Gun Hill. And this team at the bottom of Gun Hill taking a rest. So right, if you right, check right. a little bit, you'll be able yeah, to catch yeah. them. Yeah. And that kept people going. That's all, always hearing that other people are getting through. And, right. and even if you hear that somebody in front you struggling and later fire on you and make, right. make a step up again. We, 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 mm-hmm. we actually caught and passed three teams mm-hmm. on our way. And honestly, when we started, I was like, shh, boy, we're going to be out here for a while. Mm-hmm. Because we, we struggled a little bit just coming off of Bath Hill. Yeah. And I think largely part of that struggle was just not being familiar with the yeah, implements right? and implements, not being yeah. familiar with how to carry them. Coming up potholes with stress again, I was like, shh, it's an eight-hour day today for me. But yeah. once we got on the flat, yeah. we started to get steady. We heard 
team up ahead and we saw a little white t-shirt we were so up and we yeah. started to push and we finished in five hours 20 minutes whoa whoa yeah so I well, mean, your team had on some beasts as well we had on jerky jerky who's a crossfit athlete in his bag was on Ennis, his who's a martial artist um we had uh dana beg who dana Begg is another well, yeah. crossfit athlete and Corey withers again another martial artist, another martial artist. so yes. yeah if if not even if people weren't necessarily in their best shape at the moment Everybody in that team had the mental toughness to yeah. fight through and get through something like this. For yeah, sure. it's the mental, the mental aspect of it. Way more than you can ask anyone that did it. They, by the end, um, for let me say, the time you get around Glen Hill halfway through, mm -hmm. the sandbag felt just as heavy as the bucket. Right. So it was just all mental then. It was yeah, just, yeah. you know what, you get this thing on my shoulder, yeah, we pick up a rhythm yep. and go out. Which is, it was, but most important thing because I did it with my normal bar team right. uh, was the, the camaraderie it, because the first time since bar right. but we did um, the benchmark level 2 as a unit but it was not the full team because it was right. only peers so it was the first time the team actually working together communicating with each other and right. you know it, yeah it's very good for team building purposes as well yeah I think getting yourself into these types of situations with your team you learn things about each other. Mm -hmm. So that on the day, instinctively, you kind of have a good sense of how that other person is going to react. You get to look at their face and know if they're struggling or if they could push. Yeah. And that only comes from being around each other and getting to learn each other. That's not something you can, you can figure out. That's something you can, you can calculate. It only happens yeah. from being around each other and actually being in those situations repeatedly. So that's the best way to do it, I think. That leads us uh, nicely into November, right. November. Yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. when the team work really is going to be coming on, not true? Absolutely. And, and again, we wanted to make sure that when people went to register, some people were getting a little confused. And I think they're getting confused because they're seeing the 5K trail mix and they're seeing the 5K race in November on the Friday, the 26th. Right, right. Right? So these are two different events. On the 25th of September, that's the 5K trail mix. I hope I register for the right one. <laughs> <laughs> but what we've done this year, we've added an additional singles event to bar. Right? So in order to host the Caribbean Championships, we have to have two different races in two different themes. So World Obstacle has said, you know, we'll accept the 3K race as the kind of anaerobic... Imagine that. Anaerobic <laughs> theme, right? I mean, like, again, from an exercise physiology, I don't think it's that much different, but, uh, yeah. you know, we didn't really have a 100-meter course set up or a 400-meter course set up, so we'll, the 3K is really set the limit. Right, right, right. Uh, and then they start the other races from 5K and up. So we're going to use the 5K as our, like, other theme, the aerobic theme. Yeah. But that's go, that's going to go on a Friday afternoon. Um, we expect, you know, obviously COVID allowing, that's where we're going to get most of our participation from overseas athletes. Okay. And if it happens that COVID doesn't allow them to travel, then we don't lose too much because we can just kind of cancel that event and, and just yeah. focus on Saturday I, and Sunday. I feel that a, a 5K event w would be nice, though. It's nice and it, making it a whole weekend exactly. of activities. So it's also going to challenge us because, you know, people like me, my, my main thing with bars is to see how many events they could do. Right, 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 right. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm, I might even, you know, between now and November, I might try to find a way to rejig it because if we yeah. get more than 20 competitive teams, we have mm -hmm. to do an elimination. Yeah. Right? And the only place I can see right now where we can actually do that elimination will be on the Friday afternoon. Yeah. So if you are in a team that you need to do the elimination, yeah. Um, you might not be able to do the 5K singles as well. Or right. you may have to have you on a team that goes in one of the earlier waves right. so that you can then come back and do the singles later on. But we're going to try to long, but yeah. I just saw Stefan Hassan at the Olympics and exactly. if anything is possible. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think I think you can. You could probably win the 5, the 3. You could probably win the team event by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth yeah. a try, right? Yeah, everything's worth a try, but yeah. yeah. Um, good luck getting over that 10-foot wall. Right. Anything yeah. else we're jigging for a bar in November that... We, it, it, hopefully this podcast comes up before a bar yeah please <laughs> <laughs> we, we've had some missing files go over the last few weeks <laughs> Monday right so uh, I think the um, one of the major changes to how the weekend is set up is that we've moved the competitive singles into the afternoon on Saturday uh, um, that, that event is always so competitive that we really need spectators to see those athletes on show. So that used to be early Saturday morning. It's also very impressive. It is really impressive to watch. So we're going to move the open wave of the team event. Yeah. That's a fun one on Saturday morning and move the competitive singles to the afternoon so that you have more spectators there to see what they're doing. Right. Yeah, the other addition to the weekend is that we're adding the mini bar this time. Sweet. So we have the kids event. We found a sponsor for the kids event thanks to um, the PBH group. 
uh, Bayview Hospital is taking the title oh, for the nice, kids. Nice, nice, nice. So we're going to have the Bayview mini bar. And um, that's going to take place on the Sunday afternoon after the corporate challenge. Have you given any thought to the age groups for the mini bar? Yeah, four to seven and eight to 11. Anything above that can run in the age group category, the singles. Yeah. Uh, four to seven and eight to 11. And the real, really little ones are four to seven. The parents can run along with them. Yeah. Um, all the obstacles will be relatively easy for, for, for those guys. We're going to add a few skills for the older ones. Um, but yeah, we, we, we really wanted to do, we'd actually had a, a bar camp plan for the summer. Right. Um, but unfortunately, obviously, COVID, COVID put stop to that. But, you know, we have um, Beyond Limits. We have um, Feather Bed Lane with Delano Hines. Yeah. And obviously, Bar, we do our own training. So we can get the kids some, some additional skills between yeah. now and then. We'll climb in rings, monkey bars, etc. And you'll be surprised at how good the kids are just the first time on these. They, they adapt really well to things like the rings and the monkey bars because that's what they do. And... Yeah. It's be fair. They don't. They don't have the fear that a lot of adults would have developed through all as adolescence and young adulthood. Correct. They see it as playing. And you yeah. know, honestly, honestly, I think if you approach bar from the perspective of I'm gonna, it's a big adult playground. Yes. You have so much fun. Yeah. Even if you're in a competitive wave, you just go out there. You enjoy the obstacles. You make it a, a fun thing. Obviously, there's gonna be three or four or five teams that they ain't about playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're only doing bar for first place. Yeah. Yeah, anything else is a disappointment. But outside of that group. You know, go out there and make sure you spend some time and enjoy the experience because enjoy the view. An amazing experience and amazing views that you said at bar. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, actually, you've moved uh, the training block, um, the outdoor training block to Peg now. Yes. And what I've noticed is that every break that you get in between, like you know, we're probably waiting on somebody to come back in and to regroup. The people that gravitate to the edge of the cliff and just right. taking the, the scenery because it's a very beautiful. It's the most breathtaking obstacle course race in the world. Yeah, I think some people go to the edge of the cliff to try to get out the training as well. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, listen, I'd rather jump off this cliff than another repeat. <laughs> but, but outside of that, yeah, the views are, are spectacular on that side of the island. You can't yeah. really do better than, than East Coast of Barbados, for sure. So what else we got to touch on before we wrap up here right now? No, I think that's it. Go to BarbadosAdventureRace.org. Now that we're moving towards more charitable um, donations, we've gone to .org as opposed to .com. Um, so Sonic Teague forget the password, but it really doesn't seem it, that it was, it was it was it was George. It was a Teague. You can't, <laughs> can't blame Teague, but yeah, you know, Bart Benison, you call me the org. Call me out on the podcast. But anyway, <laughs> the org guys, Bart Benison Adventure Race. The org, and, and the link is there's a link there on our Instagram page as well. So yeah, go and register. Um, if you want to do this trail mix, there's only a hundred persons per division. So register quickly because registrations are already coming in. And register for bar and save some money. The early bird registration goes That's through okay. up until September 26. Mm -hmm. So the earlier you register, the more money you save. And you might find one of the bar ambassadors out there with um, you know, the ambassador title in your profile. Click on that to get a little 10% off between now and November as well. Um, bar underscore race on Instagram. The page has been very busy. Yeah, I, 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 my plan, I normally I try to post every day. Yeah, I try to post to the main page every day and if not to the stories at least. Uh, just keep people engaged. It's always, I mean, it's still a new event and it's still a new sport to Barbados. So yeah. there's a lot of new information constantly evolving. So it keeps people in the loop. It gets people talking about the event yeah. uh, and it helps to continue to help us to grow for sure. Yeah, so go follow them on Instagram. Um, you mentioned that Mali may be on an elite team, but there's a team finder still on Facebook. Barbados Adventure Race Team Finder on Facebook. You just go there and you put a post. I'm looking for a unicorn. A unicorn. <laughs> a unicorn for most people is that elite female. Yeah, uh, that is who wants right to now, do yeah. the competitive way. But uh, this year in training, I've saw some, some women come out who are going to be very good by November. Some of them are very good already. Yeah, and it's just a matter of them finding their right team. This year's event is going to be very competitive. Obviously, for those guys who are doing the competitive wave, but we have people who are training just so they enjoy the open wave more. Yeah, you know, the bar is fun. But burpees suck, right? So yeah, exactly. If you could come out and do the fun wave and be able to spend some time on the obstacles and not have to like do 900 burpees, then it's a lot more fun, I think. Okay, so 25th of September. 25th of September, Bar 5K Trail Mix, sponsored by the Amaroni Charitable Trust. Um, November 25th through 26th through 28th for actually the Bar main event. Mm -hmm. Get involved, get online, get signed up. Looking forward to seeing you guys soon. Uh, for spectators on the 25th of September for the trail mix, is there, you have an admission 
for PEG and everything started already? Um, there's no admission fee for, for PEG. We're, we're trying, again, to try and make sure that, you know, we don't get too much class. We're not really advertising spectators. Right. But obviously, friends and families can come and watch and support the kids. And, and, and support and well. support PEG's restaurant. And yeah. Come yeah. down, you know, if you're going to a restaurant, you can have them come and watch the kids in the morning. They have breakfast at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, come and support the adults in the evening and have a drink or so afterwards. Um, so yeah, no no entrance fee. Just come out and uh, support the athletes. And you don't even have to only come on Peggy. Just mentioned that you're going to be including bowling alley. Yeah. And you see that yesterday we were training. Uh -huh. And guys just come out naturally and start to watch us go down and up. Because you, if you're going to be doing an out and back on bowling alley, that might be a really good vantage point because you're going to see people zooming down, but you right. also see people coming up Craw as well. Crawling up. Crawling up. <laughs> so you get to see it from yeah. both directions. So that would be... Interesting to watch as well, yeah. Yeah, that's that's. I'm actually gonna be working on that section this evening because we have to make sure, obviously, that as I'm, you know, blazing coming down the hill, descending quickly, I'm not gonna be like running into anybody coming up. So we yeah. have to figure out, you know, how how you go down, whether we choose a side. And or you say you have to pick a side of the road, and the side of the road is actually going to be very important as yeah. well uh, for that. You know, thinking about it because uh, I think most of the time you come down. I want to say, but I feel like it's come up on the same side. So you got yeah. well, it's definitely a side that has more grip. Yeah. On the way back up. So yesterday was interesting as well, the training, because it was very slick. Yeah. And if you had on trail shoes with very deep lugs. You know, those were not working. It's <laughs> you were struggling a lot. But yeah, yeah, it's interesting to watch. And, you know, you have to be prepared for all, all eventualities when it comes to obstacle course racing. So mm -hmm. it's a good lesson for us. Uh, yeah. Okay, guys. So I, I believe that's all the time we have for today's podcast. podcast. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, we got lots to look forward to September the 25th. We're going to be having the trail mitts, 5K trail mitts. Don't forget, it's a whole day event. And the youth waves in the morning and the adult waves in the evening time. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have pop-ups in October. We're going to tell you more about them in a subsequent podcast. Right. And then in November, for sure, 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 the 26th to the 28th, yep. it's all about the big one, the bar. Everybody at PEG, the entire Barbados population. No yeah, social yeah, distancing yeah. on that weekend. We don't need it. We don't need it because <laughs> by then... But then we're yeah. going to be over this thing, guys. You'll be 101% vaccinated. Yeah. And you'll be good to go. Yeah, 0% cases. All right, guys. <laughs> that's it for the Barcast Podcast. I'm Salt. And I'm George. See you all guys next time.